Jesus never once claimed to be God. In fact, he does the opposite. Today, I'm going to go through each scripture that Trinitarians deliberately misquote in order to push their doctrine. Before we get into those scriptures though, I want to point out a teaching that I think the Trinitarians are right on. Jesus does appear to have the same essence of God. Philippians 2 verse 6 says this, Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Clearly then, Jesus is of the same form of God in a way that the angels are not. Angels are made a little higher than humans as the Bible teaches, but God is far beyond us. But the key is that Jesus was given this higher godly form, just as he was given everything by God. Now that we have clarified a few things, let's get into the scriptures that Trinitarians misinterpret. John 5 verse 18, For this reason they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. The first point we need to make quickly is that Jesus is clearly not claiming to be God here. Secondly, Jesus explains in the following verses what equality with God actually means. In verse 19, he clarifies that he is not equal in terms of authority. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. He also clarifies in verse 26 that equality with God does not mean he has always been equal with God. As we already mentioned, it says, For as the Father has life in himself, he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And finally, in verse 27, Jesus finishes by saying that he has been given authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. So, the Jews tried to kill Jesus because he claimed to be the Son of God, the Son of Man, but not because he claimed to be God. He claimed to have been given the authority to judge everyone on earth, both living and dead. What we can learn from these chapters is what equality with God means exactly. It doesn't mean that Jesus is God Almighty. He debunks this many times. It means that Jehovah God the Father has given Jesus the Son authority on the day of judgment. John 8 verse 58. Very truly I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. This was Jesus' response to the Jews who were questioning him. Jesus said, If you observe my word, you will never taste death. So the Jews responded by saying that they now knew he had a demon and asked him a question, You are not yet fifty, and you have seen Abraham? To which Jesus replied, Before Abraham was, I am. On the face of it, this is not Jesus claiming to be God. At most, all Jesus is claiming is that he existed before Abraham was born. The Trinitarians try to use the term I am to equate it to Exodus 3 verse 14, where Jehovah tells Moses, Tell the Israelites I am sent you. This is a massive stretch. Firstly, I am can be translated dozens of ways in John 8:58. The Gospels were written in Greek, not Hebrew. It could just as easily rendered I have been. Regardless, we know that it was not the claim to be a God that the Pharisees trialed Jesus for. Mark 14 verse 61 holds the key to why the Pharisees wanted to kill Jesus. It says, Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus replies in verse 62, I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. There's that I am again, but this time he is responding to a direct question. The high priest replied in 63 and 64, the high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. So we know for a fact that neither Jesus nor the Pharisees wanted to kill Jesus on the basis that he claimed to be God. To suggest otherwise is a denial of scripture. Even if Jesus was indicating that he is the I am from Exodus, it wouldn't matter anyway. God has given Jesus his holy name, as we can read in Philippians 2 verse 8 and 9, as well as John 17 verse 11. It still would not make him God Almighty. John 10 verse 30, I and the Father are one. Another example of Trinitarians being silly is found in John 10. This conversation with the Jews starts with them asking in John 10 verse 24, How long will you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us. Notice here that they are asking Jesus if he is Christ, not God. Jesus responds by saying in verse 25, I told you, 
but you did not believe. The works that I do are in my Father's name. They bear witness of me. This is the context of the conversation that the Jews were having with Jesus, no inkling from anyone that Jesus was calling himself God Almighty. Jesus then explains that they are not his sheep, because if they were, they would have listened. He then says, I and the Father are one. After hearing this, the Jews pick up stones to stone him. Jesus responds by saying, Many good works I have shown you from my Father. For which of those do you stone me? The Jews respond by saying in verse 33, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself God. And that is where the Trinitarians will stop reading, right before Jesus' response to this allegation. But since we all want the truth, let's keep reading. Jesus responds in verses 34 through 36 by saying, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming, because I said, I am the Son of God? Jesus is making two very important points here. He isn't denying that he is, in a sense, a god. All of those that the word of God came to were gods. But there is a massive difference between a god, which simply means powerful one and an almighty god, the creator of heaven and earth. This is also why he didn't correct Thomas when he says, my Lord and my God. Jesus is his Lord as well. He was given God's name, so there was no need for Jesus to stop him. Secondly, Jesus tells us plainly that the Jews here are trying to stone him because he said he is the Son of God, not God Almighty. Another passage bites the dust for Trinitarians. In conclusion, Trinitarians always miss the point. They confuse the fact that Jesus was given the holy name that is above all other names. He was given authority to act as God the Father, to fulfill his prophecies that are written down for the future. They miss the point that Jesus, although acting with the same authority as the Father, is not God Almighty. They completely ignore 1 Corinthians 15 verse 24, which explicitly tells us that Jesus, after the end, will hand his kingdom back to the Father Jehovah.